Well, welcome back again to another episode of Let's Talk About It, um, provided by Perfect Partner. Um, so today we are just uh, talking. We're just gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna let uh, Michael vent a little bit. You know, it's one of those. Things. <laughs> um, I think I did a lot of that last time, so this is good. <laughs> good that we kind of go in rotations here but uh, rotation of, of, of uh just you know what drives my gears a little bit <laughs> well let's let's hear it michael what is it that's grinding your gears today what is grinding my gears you know actually it's not even to grind the gears it's just something that was on my mind i was listening to a uh i was to a podcast another uh from somebody uh from another industry uh com- it was a com- comedian and he was talking about just you know the support of, you know, now they've all got, you know, they do shows out of their backyard, like Dave Chappelle did a show out of his backyard and invited Bill Burr. And so they're very supportive. But then he was talking about before kind of COVID, you know, they're all in the, you know, the club scenes where you had a group of, you know, you had a clique, a clique of friends in the comedy business that, you know, got along, but then the rest of the, the thing was pretty much cutthroat, you know, people backstabbing each other, they hate each other's success and stuff like that. And you know, I drew some parallels to the to our business. You know, it is rare. It's kind of like life. You find a few few friends that want to connect with you, but it seems like the industry as a whole is like, well, you know, and I can't speak to other people's regions and stuff like that. But you know, I've I've noticed some cutthroat kind of things. You know, you turn your back, and you know, someone's talking to a student, and that student comes up and says. Well, this person offered to coach me. Like, really, you know? And I've had that happen. You know, it's kind of, kind of, uh, kind of shameful. And I even knew of one instructor that um, I, he had to leave for a little bit. And like, I mean, he wasn't even like his grade wasn't even cold. And like, another instructor poached his students, tried to poach his students. I was like, wow. And so it was a big deal, big deal back then. And that was only probably like a couple of years back, but I remember that going on too. But you know, with all the good that this business is, there is that, you know, I really hate that. And I'm really hoping that um, with this whole COVID thing that we can kind of like turn that corner too, and it become more about the, you know, how can we all celebrate each other versus like, oh, well, this person has, you know, this many students and oh, but you know, he's a sucky as a teacher, you know, I don't know, I don't know. I, I'm venting on it, but that, that's, that's kind of an approach. I have other aspects I want to talk about, but that's where I'm gonna lead in. But I do want to say, though, on the side that this isn't just a bitch fest about dance. You know, sometimes we get on here and we, it seems like we're bitching, but we're just talking real. You know, we've spent, I feel, you know, I feel as a society, we, and in dancing especially, because we have to have that always positive, hey, you did great attitude. Hey, I'm doing well. And no one ever says, you know what, today was a shitty day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no one ever says yeah, that. That's true. You know, so it's not that, you know, we're bitching, but honestly, I'm being honest. I'm saying honest things, you know, once again, you've had conversations, I've had conversations with professionals and we've had a, you know, a long enough career to hear these discussions, but then you, you know, you, you have to, you, you bring it up and they go, oh, everything's great. Uh, no, nah, not really. So yeah, it, and, and this business has been great. I mean, really it has. I mean, where else can you like go travel a little bit, meet people, and, you know, hey, I'll see you on the dance floor, you know, a little friendly competition like that. But, and I've met some, I've met some pretty cool people, you you included. I've met some pretty cool people um, that I would have, wouldn't have had the, you know, the ability to meet. And I've, I've, I've gotten some good friendships of some instructors I've known since I started, you know, Josh Tilford, I've known that, I've known that guy forever, you know, and I've seen his growth. And I've celebrated that. I mean, I, I, I love seeing the growth of instructors where they come from, you know, we come in together and then we all grow and you're like, wow, I remember when we were this. So yeah, that's fun. But yeah, yeah. What do you what do you what do you think about our industry as far as like, you know, how what has been your experience like with like relationships as far as this goes? Because it is a cutthroat business, I get it, but I think sometimes that cutthroat goes a little bit too far and there's a lot of like, you know, I know we're actors on the dance floor, but we don't need to be actors in life. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you kind of uh, brought up an important uh, point, which is that you know the whole industry itself is kind of almost. It seems like when you're at the comps, when you're around the other people, it's like it's like everyone's. Uh, I don't know what way to say it other than it's like they're all trying to sell fun. So 
when that's the situation, it does kind of make it difficult to bring up. It kind of makes you seem like a downer when you point out anything that's not uh, happy. <laughs> and, and, and that's actually, and that can be misconstrued because I consider it, I don't consider it not a happy thing when you point out something's wrong and you want to fix it. To me, that's happy. <laughs> <laughs> but to the, I feel like to the majority of the people in the room, that's not happy. Um, so it, I think a bit the uh, just the culture of the sport. It's really the art part of the sport. Um, is uh, does make it difficult for you to kind of bring up issues without seeming like a Debbie Downer. Um, as far as uh, the people being a pain in the ass. You know, honestly, while you were saying the things that I connect to that, uh, I just think that's people. I mean, <laughs> I don't think that's our industry specifically. I could see how maybe we kind of target it can, or can kind of catch a lot of those individuals because of what you brought up in the beginning. The, and I don't know if you brought this up before we started recording or not, but the laziness kind of factor that can be... Uh, abused by people who teach dance, um, people who uh, kind of do it because it's an easy job. They can set their own hours. They don't consider it, you know, it's not like if someone dies, if they don't show up for work, uh, it's usually one-on-one -on -one private lessons. So, uh, you know, for some people, uh, it doesn't bug them when they're a little late or when they're, you know, uh, um, not there at all. Uh, oh, you talking about, you're talking about work ethic? <laughs> um, yeah, right. So the work ethic can slack a little bit as a result of that. I mean, I was like that in the beginning because I didn't understand what I was supposed to be doing with my dance lesson time. I thought it was just fun because that's what the environment around me taught me. Um, and even the few times that I got real training from a studio, it was not so much dance training as much as sales training. So the idea was not oh, that yeah. we were creating this, uh, that we were selling a product to someone that we had this high quality product that we were asking people to come and get. It was more so like, uh, hey, here's a list of things uh, we'll offer. See if you can get someone to buy something on this list. Um, that's what it was more, that's what, what it felt like to me. Um, now I'm sure some studios are more like this than others. Um, in my career, I worked with at least half a dozen studios or worked for and none of them were, they were all like that a little bit, some more than others for sure, but they were all for the most part focused on those things. Um, so it's a kind of the culture, it's the industry itself. I mean, I would love to see that change. I would love to see the sport uh, take over a bit more and be a bit, a bit more prioritized than the kind of art, fashion. Um, I feel like the, the art leads into um, you know, people have their own opinions and that's okay. So then they start intertwining that with everything that's going on and that's not okay. Uh, <laughs> um, there's, you know, it's, are you, saying that, are you saying there's a little fakeness in the industry because of this whole, this whole idea of, you know, we're the, we're the pros, we're the dance instructors, we have to look a certain way, act a certain way and there's sure. a fakeness yeah. to it. Yeah, you could say I, I would agree. call it a fakeness for sure. I would agree. I would definitely agree, and it's, <clears throat> it's, it sucks because this is like, you know, I came from a corporate world before I got into dance, so I was used to being, there was a structure, you know, and I didn't have to, you know, I didn't have to like my boss, you know, but yeah, I see, everyone out. still hated each other in that world though, right? They, they did, but you know what? <laughs> yeah. actually, actually, it, not really, but not for the same reasons as dance though. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, if you're eating, that means I can't eat, and that's what, because I had a salary, and then, you know, my, the mm. person next to me had a salary. But here is, you know, and it's not even, it doesn't even make any sense because I know in Ohio there's, you know, multiple millions of people here, but it's like, for some reason, if I'm getting like a great student, you got somebody across the hall looking at it going, oh, well, I'd be a better teacher for that student. You know, you're eating, I should be jealous of your success instead of wishing you, wishing you well and maybe helping out. I know like I've helped out several teachers, you know, you know, put money in their pocket, you know, I, I, you know, I would, they'd ask me for like advice on technique and, hey, come watch my student for me. Never asked me to coach for them. Never asked me to officially coach, never paid me that respect. But, you know, I went there and did it because it, it was like, you know, sure. to me, it was like, I'm helping out a friend. 
Yeah. Now, is that returned all the time? Not really. And do I see it a lot? <laughs> Not really. So, yeah. you know, and that's- Has that's that ever part. been returned? No, I'm <laughs> And there's some people that believe me, there's, there's a few that have, I will say a few that, sure. that have, you know, have returned that, you know, and sometimes, you know, we shouldn't look for that as my friend uh, Adam Maynard once said, you know, well, what was your real reason for helping? You know, <laughs> you know and I think that's for fair. Sure. I think that's fair. That's a fair viewpoint. But at the same time, there is a little expectation that like, hey, you know what, I'm helping you as a friend, but if there's ever a bump in my road, you know, can I can I at least, you know, look look behind my shoulder and you're there, you know? So I think there's a little bit of a fair expectation. Yeah. Like, you know, if we have that relationship of like, you know, if I help, if you help me out, John, then believe me, you can turn your shoulder like, okay, bump in the road for me, you know, Hey, bud. You know, can, can, can I have nobody else? Can I can I come to you? So, you know, I think there's a little bit of, and that's that. Maybe that's more the person than the dance industry as a whole. But it just seems there's just this uh, unrealistic, uh, cutthroat environment that you know. I think once again, we talked about this in another episode. What happens if we actually start helping each other? Is it really going to take food out of your mouth to help a fellow dancer, even if they're in the, in the same exact studio or if they're in a studio across town? Is it really going to, you know, disrupt your world that much? Well, this is where, I guess, you know, so many, so many thoughts. Mm. Bill, so come, come Bill. Um, I mean, a lot of it, I feel like I've said before, I mean, part of it, like to answer the last thing that you were saying, uh, well, not so much answer it, but to talk about it, uh, you know, <clears throat> there's enough people, there are so few people dancing. There's so few, few people ballroom dancing, or paying for instruction, learning to dance, going out socially. Um, and if we now, as a whole- You mean now with, with COVID? I mean, ever. Never. Okay. Whether, but good specification. It's not just COVID. I mean, just in general, like ballroom dancing is not something that's popular. <clears throat> so I think it's pretty obvious that we can't uh, move forward as a whole, as an industry, until we get more people dancing. Now, a lot of the stuff you're talking about is kind of when we stop trying, when we stop keeping the focus on getting more people dancing, we run into these problems that you're talking about. Um, because these are problems kind of, yes, that no matter what, we're going to occur along the way. Part of them, some of them, just like what you're talking about, like people going through hard times, it's like <clears throat> everyone ends up going through a hard time. And there wasn't enough work before that uh, for someone to be able to lean on someone else because they're going through a hard time at the same time. And even if they're not, they're just starting to get started. Yeah. Uh, so to, for them to stop and help you yeah, is stunts. Then. And so that it's such a, a, a young industry. What, no matter how long it's been around in terms of actually where it's at. Uh, it's a young industry, this ballroom world in America and uh, there's, the jobs aren't there yet. So in order to create those jobs, I think the whole of the dance community needs to be focused on just getting more people ballroom dancing. Um, but you know, there are little fires like this along the way I think we all have to put out as individuals and you'd like to just say, uh, you could count on people's character to not take students and things like that but mm -hmm. you know my mind on that subject goes to usually if a student leaves that's what's best no matter what and if they left in a fashion that someone took them then at least i believe from my experience it was because i waited too long to stop teaching them i agree i agree so, i agree yep there is, um, you know, there is that personal accountability. And I've actually had that conversation with someone else too. Um, I was talking to, I think I was, I was talking to someone about that. And I think I read it in a book too. It's like, you know, if, if someone comes along and can and take your client, well, there's a conversation that probably did, was not had at some point between you and your student where, you know, maybe they were unhappy or, or unhappy or something like that. Now, I've never lost a student. I think I've lost one in my whole career. And that was because uh, she felt like, you know, I didn't like give her, a one top notch, you know, solo attention at a competition, which is unrealistic when you have six girls at a competition. It's like, well, I want to be treated as if I'm by myself. Well, I have to share, you have to share the time with other people. So she wanted to get, you know, that kind of Jerry Maguire personal attention, which was almost impossible. 
So the expectation was a little bit high there, but that's the only student I've ever lost. Now, me talking about that, it's, it, it's still the idea that it, it hurts to hear, hey, this person approached me to give lessons. I'm not worried about you taking my client. I'm, I'm more concerned with the fact of like, you felt that disrespect or that level of, of lack of respect for me to right. go, you know what? I think I'm better than you. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, and, and, and it probably wasn't that, to be honest, and that very often, I think, might go back to the whole being, again, it being a small industry, uh, because they need the money, too. You know, they're concerned about getting, uh, now, not everybody, obviously. I think, yeah, not everybody. But, not everybody. but the majority of the time, like, so I, I'm from the Cleveland area in terms of teaching Akron, Canton, Cleveland, Ohio. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and uh, a little bit in Columbus, but not much. Uh, and, you know, there's not a, a big dance community here. There's a big social dance community, but, you know, they don't want to take private lessons. They just want to go out and dance what they've learned. And that's also, I won't go into it, but that's also a side product of us not uh, pushing forward and improving the quality of what we do. But um, there's not, there's a small, uh, there's not a big uh, population of people who are already interested in learning to ballroom dance. So for these uh, teachers around who are looking to get students, mostly they survive off of referrals. The studios, even the studios mostly survive off of referrals. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of them that are in good locations. So they, I'm sure, pick up some people here and there. But even still, I would bet, and from what I do know, they still pick up the majority of their clients off of referrals. So we've got to solve this problem. Why uh, is ballroom dance not an interest or, or is it not in front of people enough? Yeah, I think, I mean, honestly, I think ballroom dancing is a niche market. It's kind of like, you know, custom suits. I used to, I, I still kind of do, but I used to do custom suits, you know, custom tailored suits. That's not for everybody. You know, that's, that's really not, I mean, it's really not. I mean, it's, it's, you're going to have a, you're going to have a, you're going to have a set market of people that are, that fit that demographic that want that suit. Um, others will just go to a men's warehouse, but there is a difference, you know? So it, it's a niche market. It really is. And I think ballroom dancing is a niche market. Um, yeah, it, it's gone mainstream, but I think with the, with everything kind of like dying down with the dance shows, I think it's going to go back to that niche market again, you know, which is which is what it was before it was mainstream. So I don't feel like it was ever really mainstream. That, you know? It's like there's a well, difference it between mainstream. It definitely uh, went mainstream. So it just because mainstream. dancing with the stars is, is like some people never even watch television. Some people never watch ABC, uh, who do watch television. Some there's the majority of the population. I won't say the majority, but there's a large portion of the population that when. Uh, of dancing with the stars comes on they're just going to flip the channel because it's uh you know you could say so many things it's just the yeah. kind of culture of america but uh um I, I don't believe that it's a cliche market i mean if you look at the rest of the world they dance. Cliche, no a niche market not a cliche niche i'm sorry yeah, yeah i'm sorry my fumble of words my bad uh i, I don't think it's uh, a niche market it's look at the rest of the world i mean they're dancing so why aren't we and you could say it's our culture and that's fine, but then we can change our culture. Our culture is already changing dramatically. The American culture changes faster than any other culture out there. Uh, I mean, uh, I, the interest can be built up. Like if we, there is definitely a way to get these, um, I don't know what we want to call them for lack of a better, the athletes more interested in, uh, uh, dance and if we could do that that would be i think the key to getting uh the american market you know what i mean yeah like, it's got to be yeah. a sport i get where you're going with that one yeah i get where you're going with that one i think it's a um i think that's a whole nother conversation because i've got some things to say about that about like you know society and where you grew up in too i mean that's going to play a part in a lot of things because i didn't hear about ballroom dancing because you know of the neighborhood i grew up in and even if you did hear ballroom dancing, you didn't ballroom dance. That was not what you're supposed to do, you know? You didn't know what it was. Nope, don't I, get would, it I wouldn't even know yeah. what it was. Right. Ballroom you know. dancing. I would assume it was like in a barn. And not and not to sound like, you know, stereotypical, but most of the people I grew up with, we, it was all about, you know, being, a, being an athlete, you know, not to be stereotypical, but that was truth, you know? So, you know, that was success for us. That was, a, that was a way out for most of the people that, you know, I grew up with. Like, hey, I can ball. That means I can go to college. 
So, you know, you didn't ballroom dance. Ballroom dance was thought of as a different thing. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't even thought of, in my opinion. Ballroom well, it wasn't, wasn't thought, thought of for of. it wasn't thought of for us, but I'm just saying, like, even if it would have been, it would have been like theater. You don't ballroom dance because men don't ballroom dance. It would have been like theater. Yeah. 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 You don't do that, you know. So that's a whole nother conversation. But you know, I get I guess in general, like what I was saying about like the whole our colleagues and our industry and just the, you know, the teacher to teacher aspect of it. Yeah, I would like to see, like we talked about the COVID and getting, the, getting a vaccine, the world work together. We talked about like, you know, things working together. What would it look like if this, if we all just work together and celebrate each other, you know? And, 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 and instead of like the, the certain few that you can, you know, can do something for you. Like, you know, hey, this person has a, I'm gonna be buddy up to the organizer. Hey, I'm gonna buddy up to this person. What if you buddy up to the person that's been, you know, you've been sitting next to for the last couple of years and like, hey, let's boost each other up here. Like, hey, I'm doing a little group. Let me bring you on that. Okay, great. Let me, you know, let me do this. Let me bring you on to that. You know, it's a- Yeah, it's there's a, a lot of, there's a lot of sucking up. Yeah, it's an idealistic idea. And that's me being who I am, you know, I. I always thought there was a, and that was the, the vision I took was early on was like, how can we work? And there's people that'll tell you I've done this, got the group together and said like, hey, let's go forward and like boost each other up. Took people like, you know, that weren't like big names. And it was like, hey, come do a dance camp for me. And, sure. you know, let me put some money in your pocket and get you known. So, you know, and that's just not to boost my own, my, my, to my own horn or anything like that. I'm just saying that because that's the yeah, idea. You feel good. Yeah, that's and you feel I would hope that would be more infectious and you know we can see that we can still all make it and i think if we all had a louder voice working together our voice would be loud enough to bring people in instead it's more of like let's segment everything off which just segments the industry as a whole you know versus like the the industry having this big booming voice of like people that are just celebrating each other and boosting each other up and edifying each other and helping each other grow i think that would actually be you know a way forward <laughs> That sounds nice. I'm an idealist, so I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's nice. It's just, uh, unless there's some cause to keep them doing it, it's just temporary. You know what I mean? There's got to be some, they all have to share the same fight. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's true. And the funny thing is, I just think we we do share the same fight. It's just, you know, we're, we all want the same thing. And to be honest, most of, I don't know why people got into dance, but, you know, I thought most of it was a love of, love of the love of it you know and yeah some people get into it for the wrong reason of like well i can do it because i think i can do it because i can make money at it and all this other stuff like well so yeah there but, is, but there's so many perspective i i don't i can't i can't think to why how each person got involved in it you know what i mean it's going to do something different for each person i mean well, no, I, it, is, it is that's what i'm saying because like i'm, I'm thinking the reason is why because you're saying like um we're not fighting all for the same thing but you know the ones that love the sport, we are fighting for it—the survival of it because we need the survival of it. I actually so know. Maybe I should say, maybe I should say, everyone needs to consciously work towards. Because uh, I mean, if you're meaning that everybody work towards it in their own way by doing their own thing, uh, <laughs> by just teaching dance to people, then yeah. But I don't see anybody as a collective working towards the idea of getting more people dancing. Well, I just don't think there's a, a future. I don't, I don't think there's a collective voice of working together, period. I, I right. don't think it really is. Exactly. Take the getting the dance out of it, because it, honestly, at a, from a root standpoint, if you go to the base of the problem, if we just had an idea that, OK, I can help this person and celebrate this person, and I can still be me and still be a success. It's not it's not a binary thing of like, well, either I make it or you make it. It's not Hunger Games. It's, it's really not. Well, and been, another thing that you pointed out earlier was that, you know, you came from, uh, well, you used the corporate world as a kind of comparison, you know, or get, just mean, like, specifically it was, it was getting a salary. Um, yeah. Like, that does, like, that is the nature of the beast, too, in the business. Like, yeah. there's a reason that people uh, act the way they do when they don't get paid a salary. They're going to naturally, on instinct, grab every bit of money they see. It creates that uh, kind of uh, a more negative view of getting the work. Um, it kind of puts a negative twist to it. Um, it's kind of like it's kind of like giving a quota to policemen. Like it's like make sure 
you <laughs> that people do this many things wrong. Like that's not the way it's supposed to be. Uh, like that, that's not the, how it's supposed to work at all. Why would why would they have to meet a quote? All right, yeah. It really incentivizes I see what uh, you're doing. I see what you're doing. Uh, negative. Yeah, you should be doing things to assist others, not not to prevent them from do, being able to uh, make things happen. Yeah. Um, and even if yeah. you work hard at that, you will find that, like you were saying, assisting others is actually the best route to getting what you need as well. So, and that and that's why you need this long term goal that everyone has agreed upon. It can kind of get people organized and focused around and prioritizing this, so that those other things, those other problems that come across, though yes, they can remember to address them at a later time or just kind of appease them as they go by. They're not the priority. They're thing, and they're not the priority because we understand that when we get to this greater world that we're working towards, mm -hmm. those problems won't exist anymore. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's gotta be some you're preaching. You're preaching. So <laughs> maybe, <laughs> I mean it, it, and maybe this just goes back to a a maybe not even a dance problem, just a human problem. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I just think but we can improve it. I think it's a definitely a human thing, a human characteristic, a human problem. But I think it's I think it's 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 multiplied by our industry. Yeah. Because of those things that we've mentioned, absolutely. And I'm just saying it doesn't have to. <laughs> and I just, and I, I'm gonna say this. I've been in this long enough to understand. You're gonna make money. This this business is cyclical. You may have a great year where you're like, yeah, I made a uh, ninety thousand. Right. Then the next year you make thirty. You know, you're like, right. what happened? You're gonna have the ups and downs. It doesn't mean like the dynamic has changed. And That's it's true. like, you know, if you're that lazy that you have to go for the low hanging fruit, which is your colleague students, because you're too lazy to go out there and do the work, get a website buy a Facebook ad, do something, you know, get another certification. I don't care what it is. Like to me, that's the issue. Do it. Do it. <laughs> to me, that's the that's the issue. You know, it, it and then you know how hard is it to like go, you know, if you if you and once again, hopefully COVID is a is a new new start. You know, I really hope it is. You know, I really hope it is. I'm hearing that from industry to industry. You know, I'm hearing that in like different, like like the comedies, the comedy industry. I'm hearing temporary, it, huh? Temporary. It may be, it may be. A lot of those things are temporary, but a maybe lot of everything is temporary until we we get comfortable again, and then we go back to what it was before. Yes, that's human. That's human nature. But when we stop hoping, <laughs> what is there left except to join them? So I refuse to give up hope that of a of you know a better existence. And it really, it's not unrealistic. It's not like this is an idealistic thing. It's just saying that change your viewpoint of the dance industry. Just because someone's eating doesn't mean you're not going to eat. And maybe if they you boost them up and help them get to where they go, they turn around and go, hey. Mm -hmm. I got some group classes I want you to do. It's just a it's yeah. just a changing of a view of how to do things versus like, well, you're not from my studio. Oh, I'm an independent. You're an independent. Let's see who can be. You know, sure. I have some. Even if you do it for the selfish reasons, I mean, that's a keep yourself busy. If being busy in your industry requires you helping someone out, then th that's great. That's that's how you progress in your industry: staying busy, staying active, getting involved. Uh, you might not get paid for something now that 10 years from now you'll get paid a lot for. And the point you made about some years being good, some years being bad is a huge thing. So invest your money. Uh, don't spend uh, the money when you get it. I mean, it, it feels like this goes along with the world. Oh, my God. People, yeah, people just. That leads it. me into yeah. my yeah. other. Grind yeah, we, don't, we, we, we should probably take that one a different take time. Take that one another day. I think yes, so. No, we're going to talk about professionalism at some point. <laughs> <laughs> because that has left some black some some black marks on the industry as a whole. It really has. We have those ones that don't take care of the money and then don't refund the money, take off with the oh. money. Oh uh, yeah. And now you know it's like a bad relationship. Then you get that wounded person coming into into your you know your roster, and you're like, hey, well this is the way things work. Well, I'm a little iffy about doing things like that because you're like, yeah, there's well, so many of those stories. Right? Yeah. There's many of those stories, but yeah, yeah we'll, that's a we'll that's a long one. We can do that another time. Let's do that another time. But yeah, I really, you know, 
I really stand by that. You know, I really hold out hope for, you know, just in general, you know, in, am I perfect? No. And, you know, do I mess up? Absolutely. We all do. You know, no one's perfect. But I just think, you know. I don't mess up. <laughs> Was that recorded? Damn. Shoot, I forgot we were recording. I mean, I've never JK? messed up in my life. This is, I can't even imagine messing up. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm not perfect. I, you know, I've got my quirks. I've got my issues, you know, as a person. But I, I hold out that, you know, I always strive to make myself better, you know. And I'm hoping that, you know, that we can come out of this. And at least if people are listening to this, if pros listen to this, you know, if y'all want to reach out and collaborate, I'm always up for that. You know, I'm always up to edify instructors. If you got something new you've been working on, I'm always up for that. That's why when you came up with the perfect partner, I was on board with that because guess what? someone that's innovating something in an industry that I love, that's only gonna help the industry. And I don't care if, yeah. if, I, if I'm not making money off that product, boost that up because all that does is boost the industry. We're all in this tide, we're all gonna rise with it. But people don't see it that way. They see like the, the ocean is like, well, it's gonna raise here, raise here and you're, you're crap out of luck. Yeah, absolutely. It works. And the more we keep doing it like that, it will not work and, and we'll never raise up. It'll just always be in this little area where it is versus like, you know, the more we shout together, the more people are going to go, wow, I really want to be a part of that. And then maybe it does go beyond a niche market, which I still think it is. <laughs> but you're fighting for it to be different? I would love for it to be different. Like, you know, I mean, I would love. Was that, a, was that like an actual question of am I? I um, yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> Actually, like like I said, if I actually told you what I did, like I said, it was this was years back. This was probably like maybe like maybe like ten years ago, something like that. But I got the group of people from in Ohio. I got them from all parts of like Ohio came here. There was at least about a good ten, about 12, 13 of us sitting at a Bob Evans. I got it together and tried to get this whole thing off the ground. Like, hey, let's support each other. Let's get this mapped out. Let's meet every once in a while. Let's do this one. And like you said. It got comfortable and people saw it was work. And it's like the first question was like, well, how do how do I profit from this if if I'm helping this person? And it came to that, you know. Um, I've thrown a couple dance camps. I've thrown several dance camps in Columbus. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like a big booming success or anything like that, but I invited just people I worked with. I did have some big names in there, but I'm like, hey, you want to come over and do a group class on Saturday? You want to do one on Friday? You know, it's a paid gig, get you some money in your pocket. And, you know, I, just, I feel like you... Are learning your stuff. I feel like you're honing your craft, and I want to edify you. Sure. So I did go. So I've tried to do things, you know, at cost to myself. Yeah, that's nice. You know, and you know, once again, maybe I can come up with a better plan. So, but yeah, working with you, that's been a great step for me. And hopefully, like doing this, you know, like we can sit ourselves out there and just say, hey, we're open. And that's all you can say is like, you know, we're open for change, and um, I think it's going to be for the better of the industry. Yeah, no, I think I can't. I can't disagree with any of that. I think that's well said. I feel better. <laughs> well, uh, if you are one of those teachers at home and you're watching us, I know there are many of you that are in support of you know just working together. You've, you know, those people who were in Michael's group. Um, I've had a few groups of my own, so we know that you're out there. Uh, even if it's just a like, give us a like. Show other people that you're out there too, and uh, we'll see you guys next week for another let's talk about it all right everybody be safe once again thank you jonathan and um let's talk about it later thanks michael thank you everybody at home everybody